Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another arcade game repair video for you today. We've got this wonderful Sea Wolf arcade game here, and it has been acting up lately, so we just turned it on and it's not booting up. But the monitor is working and the soundboard is working, as you can see. But the game is not actually booting. Now, it was booting earlier but there were some glitches in the graphics and things so we believe that there's a power supply problem or there's some kind of RAM problem so what we're going to do is open her up and check out the power supply first so we figured we'd film this little video for you if you've got something similar maybe it can help you walk through it systematically and uh, hopefully we'll get it figured out so the first thing we're going to do is turn it around and start checking the power supply be right back Okay, folks, we've removed the back door. I'll show you how these things are set up inside on the Sea Wolf. You have your monitor chassis. Um, we rebuilt that, of course, and that appears to be working. Uh, this is actually the soundboard. Very unique soundboard. It creates all these discrete sounds with, or I, I call it discrete sounds. I don't know if that's the proper word for it, but it creates all these sounds with these little capacitors and resistors and then you have a separate knob to adjust each one and then this is the sound amp. It appears to still be working. Whenever you turn it off you hear all of it go Beep. You have the game board. This is the motherboard here and this is what they call the daughter board which uh, you know of course is all still connected well and then over here you have the power supply. So what we're going to do is we're going to check the voltages on the power supply and uh, then we're going to check them uh, on the board to see if we're still getting our proper voltages over. I'm going to look in the schematics and see where the best way to do that is. I believe this is actually the the uh, the wiring for the controls and everything and the the lights on the above the the monitor, but this is where the power actually goes in. Um, so we're going to check that out and see if we're getting the correct voltages to the board. Um, I'm looking here on the other side. You probably can't see that right now because it's so dark, but the uh, everything looks good. And of course we got the fuses here. So uh, we're going to check these voltages first. Let me go uh, look up some numbers on the uh, schematics and then I'll come back and we'll check those. All right, folks, so I went and I wrote down some of my voltages that I'm supposed to have. And this is the edge connector that provides the voltage to the PCB. When I turned it back on just now, I've got some uh, gibberish on the screen where it's resetting and now it went off to where there's nothing on the screen. So we're going to check some voltages. So on this connector on the PCB, this first uh, wire is white and that is your plus five. And all of your grounds are down at this end. You can kind of see where there's a big pad on the PCB. So I can see that y'all can't see anything with that like that. Um, hmm. You'll have to trust me. All right, so I'm going to very carefully, I'm not going to check the actual connector, I'm going to check on the board. So that is on a ground. And then we're going to check on this pin. And we have 5.08. And if we move down to this one, we have 12.02. And if we move down to this one, we have negative 5.18. So we have all of our voltages on the board. So since the board's tripping, it's not a voltage problem. Okay? So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, turn off the power. And this is just for this specific game or like Space Invaders has a similar issue. I'm going to turn off the power and then uh, there is a connector right here, this green connector, that connects this daughter board to the motherboard. And sometimes you have problems with that. So I'm going to uh, turn off the power uh, and then take out this screw and one at the other end, remove that daughter board and then reseat it just to make sure that it's not a connection problem because there's address lines and data lines that run through that connector. So uh, that'll be next. Let me go get a screwdriver. All right, folks, so I took that loose, slid it out, put it back in. The, the edge connector looked good. Turned it back on, 
Same exact thing. So it doesn't have anything to do with the connection between the motherboard and the daughter board. So now we're to the point where we know that it's a problem with a chip somewhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, and we've already cleaned all of the ROMs. This game has new ROMs in it that we burned. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install my trusty Seawolf test ROM in the first ROM position, and it runs through a little check and will tell you if any of the RAM are bad. So uh, you basically just install it like it's the first ROM. Well, they also make one that's just like it for a like a uh, Space Invaders, which is the same Midway 8080 board. So we're going to install that test ROM um, and then turn it back on and see if it gives us some kind of error code. All right, folks, so we're going to turn it on and see what it does. Now, you can't see too good because of the reflection. I understand that, but... Can you see it? Let me see if I can zoom you in. Oh, it went off. Let's try it one more time. Oh, there it is. It reset. Okay, that looks like a D to me. And the boo is the soundboard turning off. So I believe that RAM D is not working. So we're going to check that out. So now I have to take the board out. All right, folks, so my test bench is a little cramped here, but this is the Seawolf board. These are the RAM chips. This is the CPU. On a Seawolf or a Space Invaders, which are the two most popular of these boards, you always had the same problem. You had a problem with the RAM chips. So you can see that several have already been replaced. So they start with that. The way the test ROM works is this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And this is A, B, C, D. So that's the one that we need to change. So we're going to try to swap that out. And I'll show you a little uh, bit of a, if I can get the camera to go down there. I'll show you how the best way to change out a RAM chip, or any chip really. We know that chip's bad, you know. So what we're going to do, instead of trying to pry it out of the board where we screw it all up. I mean screw the where we could potentially screw up the board. I'm gonna cut it out with these uh, uh well if I can get a good grip on it with these side cutters. So what I'm doing is I'm just trying to cut out the legs off of the chip and what that's gonna do is it's gonna destroy the chip but we think the chip's bad anyway. So you're better off just destroying the chip than destroying the actual board. So those aren't working that great. I've got a better pair of those around here somewhere, but I can't not find them. Let's see if these will work any better. have to struggle through with these but I don't like filming myself struggle so I'm going to cut that out and then uh, I'll turn it over and start desoldering the uh, well you're crooked aren't you I'll turn it over and start desoldering the uh, the pins off the back side be back in a second all right folks so I was able to cut out the chip and then if I can get it I think that's the right one yeah um, suck out all the solder Whoop. and it came out pretty clean so cut them out if you can help it sometimes you can't do it and so those RAM chips on this particular board are an A9060 um so in a perfect world, I would have the right socket to put that in, but I do not. So I have these machine strip ones where I'm going to have to just make the right size. Um, you're better, though, if you have like an actual dual wipe socket. Works a lot better. But always put them in a socket because they might go bad again. 
maybe even 10, 15 years from now. And it would suck for the next guy to uh, have to heat up those traces again. You know, the more you do that, you're, you're going to end up damaging them. So we're going to put a socket in it so that in the future, if it messes up again, uh, it'll be much easier to swap out. So I'm going to put the socket in, and then we'll try it in the game and see if that um, see if that fixed it. It very well may give me another RAM error code, but we'll see. All right, folks, so we put the test ROM, I mean, we put it all back together, and the test ROM is coming up on the screen. It is testing some of the lights and everything at the top right now. And then it's going to move over to here and test the periscope stuff. So let's see if all of it's working. Whoa. I about fell through the wall. Let's see if we can... I don't know if I can see when the periscope lights come on. Okay, yeah, that should be on now. Yep. Three, two, one. And then whatever the other one was. Oh, yeah, at the top. Yeah, it's going to do the sounds, which I think it's going to get real loud here. So according to the test chip, we're good. So we're going to put the ROM back in and then see if the game comes up. All right, folks, I'll put the ROM chip back in and we are up and running, it appears. Such a cool game, just the design of it. It's sweet. Here comes the ship. Torpedo's gonna hit it. Boom, got it. All right, so we'll try it real quick. I love the sound on this thing. Let's see if I can just hit something while y'all are watching. Oh, snap. Only thing that sucks about these is they always have a lot of burn in, but really what can you do? That little fast sucker. Missed him. All right, so you get the point. So I got lucky on this one because the game had already been worked through, so I knew it had to be something simple. But if you've got one that's acting up or it's never been rebuilt or whatever, just do exactly what I did. Just start with the power. You need to make sure your game board's getting the power that it wants, typically the five volts specifically the five volts, I mean, um, and the 12 and the negative five. And then if the power is fine, uh, <laughs> that speedboat's annoying. Uh, typically, if the power is fine, then uh, you need to look at your ROMs and your uh, CPU chip. Uh, once you've got a good CPU chip where it's trying to run code, you can put in that test ROM and see if, if it'll check the RAM for you. So uh, there we go. Now, if you like repair videos like this one, Sea Wolf. If you like repair videos like this one, uh, subscribe to us here on YouTube. We do these all the time. Now, if you want to see what games we have available for sale right now, you can check them all out on our website. Go to lionsarcade.com and uh, you can see everything that we have available at the moment. Um, or you can stop by and see us. We're in downtown Rock Hill, South Carolina, about 15 miles south of Charlotte, North Carolina. We've got a whole building full of cool games like this. Most of them are newer than this, but uh, we try to keep in some of the old ones. But hey, if people buy them all, people, I mean, what can we say? If they buy it, we can't keep it in. I'm not going to turn down a sale. I mean, uh, but make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the time to film this for you. I could have just done this and not filmed it, but I took the time to take you with me step by step. So give us a thumbs up, leave your comments below, and we will see you on the next video.